Here are five simple steps to take your color grading to the next level. Here are two clips in my timeline that were shot on a red helium weapon camera in the log format. That's why it looks a little bit milky. If you're starting in Rec. 709 footage, which is the standard color footage, you can just skip this step and move on to step number two. So the first thing we need to do is convert our log color space into Rec. 709. Rather than playing around with these controls to bring back in the contrast, we can just apply a free log to Rec. 709 conversion LUT. Let's start with the first clip. So select this clip, then go to your Lumetri color panel and from basic correction, underneath input LUT, I've already imported these free LUTs. So select the one that corresponds with the correct camera. In this case, I'm choosing the red log film dragon color to Rec. 709. And immediately we can see a difference. This is the before and this is the after but this is just the beginning. So another thing you might notice that I have open here on the left are Lumetri scopes. If you go to your workspaces tab, make sure you're in the color workspace and your Lumetri scope should pop up right over here. Now these three scopes are the basic scopes that I use for all of my color grading. We have the YUV vector scope, which helps us identify the saturation of the color. So you can see all the colors are in this nice color wheel from red all the way to yellow. And this graph represents how much saturation is in that color. And this line here, this is the skin tone line. And we'll get to that later on in this video. And on the right, this is the Luma waveform. And this represents the brightness of the image. Now we can see it needs to be a bit brighter because we want to get it closer to 100. And down here, this is the RGB parade. This shows you the color balance between the reds, the greens, and the blues. So if you don't see one of these open, don't worry, you can click on this wrench tool and you can make sure to go down here to waveform Luma and make sure that the waveform is turned on. Make sure you have your parade on and your vector scope YUV. So next we can move on to more of these basic corrections, but rather than moving these sliders ourselves, let's use AI auto color as a starting point. So just click on auto and Adobe Sensei technology will then move these sliders to determine the best result and correction for this image. So you can use this intensity slider to adjust how much of these corrections you want made. These parameters move according to this. So this is a great starting point, but we still have to look at the scopes and determine what else we need to do. For example, the bottom here is kind of peaking at zero. So the shadows are getting a little bit too dark. So I probably want to make some adjustments to that. So this is where we can actually go down to the curves tab and this white line can controls the Luma waveform. If we want to bring that bottom up, just like the bottom of this Luma line, and look, as I bring this up, it starts to lighten the image. The Luma waveform moves up slightly too. So we just want a very subtle amount just to lessen that deepness slightly. And depending on your image, if you want to make it slightly brighter, you can grab the top end of this Luma curve and just bring it over slightly. We don't want to do it too much because then it might get a little bit too bright and start to peak. So just maybe a subtle amount here, not too much. I may go back and correct this later on. So going back to the RGB parade here, this shows the balance of color, right? And it's looking pretty balanced. It doesn't look like the white balance is off at all. But if there's anything else wrong here, remember you can always use the red curve controls to control the red waveform here, the green and the blue and so on. All right, so now let's take a look at the skin tone. So let's go ahead and let's zoom in here to about 200%. You can go to effect controls and we can use opacity pen tool to draw a mask just around a patch of skin. So just click and then close it off. So now when we go back to Lumetri scopes, this is just showing a visualization of the skin color itself. So if I turn off the RGB parade, the waveform, we can get a better closer view of the vector scope. This line right here represents the skin color. And we can see it's a little bit off to the yellow side. It should be more in line with the skin tone line. So we need to shift it over just slightly. So how do we do that? This is where we use curves also, but instead of using the RGB curves, we go to the hue saturation curves. And in this case, we use hue versus hue, which is changing a color of an existing color. So what we're gonna do is use the dropper tool and select this color. 
and it will create three dots on this line, which represents that color. Click on the middle dot and then we get this RGB spectrum. We actually wanna bring it up in the spectrum to be a little bit closer to red. So that way it's exactly on this line. So bring it back to fit, go to effect controls and let's turn off opacity by clicking this effects icon to turn off that mask. Zoom back in again. So this is the before, a little bit more yellow, and this is the after. And you can just see a little bit more red is in the skin, which is exactly what we wanted. So you can use this technique on any shots where there's skin tones that you think are a little bit off and it doesn't matter what the skin color of the person is, you just want to line up that skin tone color on that line. All right, so now we can use the curves to have some more creative fun. It's still technically correcting the image, but it is veering into the category of grading, which is more creative look of your video rather than correcting the footage. So for example, here in the background, this red color, it's a little bit more pink compared to this orangey red of the ketchup in the scene. So what if we wanted to change this color to match more of this color? What we can do is use the hue versus hue again. So we can select this dropper and we can select this color and it will create three more dots here. And now for this, I can bring this to go down and see how I'm changing this color to be a little bit more of that ketchup color. If we do the before and the after matches this color, which is awesome. If we want this red color to be more saturated, we can use hue versus saturation. So we can use this dropper tool, select this red color, and then we can boost this up to be more saturated. Now we don't want it to be too saturated because remember with the vector scope, we don't want the color to be outside of this broadcast safe line. So we need to tone this down and see as I do that, it starts to get back in line. So already it's pretty saturated, but broadcast safe is really just for TV. So if you're just posting on social media, this doesn't really apply. So you can go a little bit outside of the lines and it should be okay. So we did some creative corrections here. What about creating a really nice film color look? Now, of course, you can use different color grading LUTs that you can purchase online. There's so many different LUT packs that you can get, but there's actually a plugin for Premiere Pro, and don't worry, it's not subscription that I use all the time, and it's called Film Convert. So after you install it, you can actually download a trial to follow along, and it will have a watermark, and I'll put a link just down below. But we just need to go to Effects, and we can search for Film Convert. Select Film Convert Nitrate and drag and drop it on the clip. And immediately you can see that there's a difference, but first we need to select our correct camera model. So go to Effect Controls, and down here, we can see that there are controls for Film Convert Nitrate. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you install your camera pack, which you can download from the Film Convert website. In this case, I already downloaded the red camera profile. So I'm going to choose my camera, and go down to red, and I'm going to choose helium weapon. And rather than choosing the log film, because we already converted it to Rec. 709, I'm going to choose the standard dragon color, in this case, the gamma four, and then press apply. Let's turn off film convert. So this is the before, and this is the after. Right now it's applying this Kodak film stock. There's many other different stocks to choose from. And I really like the Fuji H160S Pro. I actually chose the 35 millimeter full frame, but you can also do like super eight, which will make it super grainy. But the 35 millimeter full frame just adds a subtle amount of grain size and you can customize the grain size to be anything you want. There's a few more correction controls that you can do directly here inside of Film Convert, but I like using Lumetri Color first because of the hue saturation curves. And then as the final grading touch, applying Film Convert. So if you're interested in Film Convert, Film Convert sponsored this video and they set up a code Premier Gal where you can get 10% off a lifetime license to use Film Convert for your grades in your films. So we have Film Convert applied, the correct film stock. The last thing I like to do is go back to Lumetri Scopes here and just turn back on the waveform again and the parade just to make sure everything is looking good here. So the last thing I wanna to do to this clip is create a little S curve on the Luma waveform. But because we already adjusted the Luma curve here, we actually need to go up here to Lumetri Color and add another instance of Lumetri Color. 
And after I do that, if we scroll down, you can see we have one Lumetri color here and we have another instance of Lumetri color added. So what I can do is just click here and add a slight little curve here, a classic S curve. Go to the scopes. If we turn this off, you can see that there's a little bit less contrast, but if I turn it on, it just boosts it up slightly. And this is the beginning log footage. This is what it looks like with our Rec 709 conversion LED applied and some corrections. And this is with our film convert grade. And this is with our classic S curve. So I think it looks really fantastic. The last thing that we can do is copy this to the other clips shot in this scene. In this case, I just have one more shot here of her eating the burger close up. So what I can do is I can right click on this, select copy, and then you can select this clip or however many clips that you have, you can select them all at once and right click and select paste attributes. And you can copy the Lumetri color effect, the film convert nitrate and the S curve Lumetri color effect and press okay. Now these effects were applied to this clip. It went from looking very washed out like the log footage to then looking very rich with all the effects that we applied to this clip. Now you might be wondering why I didn't use an adjustment layer on top of all of the clips. I could have, but if I ever want to go in and make some slight adjustments at the clip level, which is very much the case because every clip can have different things happening with the lighting, it's important that these effects are at the clip level. All right, so this is the next level advanced here when it comes to color grading. Let's say that you receive all the footage, but some of the clips were shot on a completely different camera. So you have some clips that were shot on red and some that were shot on Sony, for example. How can you match those colors? Well, I actually made a video on how to do that using Film Convert's other color matching tool called Cinematch. And you can click right over here to go check out that video. And as always, stay creative and keep on creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.